automakers frequently use the word sport as a synonym for worse. Cars with that designation latch onto the cash of a model name in an attempt to make the buyer feel good about their decontented. Just because a car has fewer features does not make it quicker, give it a higher top speed, or let it handle better. The latest Range Rover Sport is an exception. The Sport was the first variant that moved the Range Rover name into slightly more accessible territory. It was smaller, less luxurious, and didn't have every off-road feature that the big dog Range Rover had. That 2004 model also cost much less than the Range Rover, so it quickly became the best-selling car with Range Rover in the name. The past 20 years have been good to the sport. A big redesign in 2014 saw it move to aluminum architecture that resulted in a huge weight loss about 800 pounds and better driving dynamics, if still a bit compromised compared to its big brother. This newest version is another leap. The choice between Sport and Range Rover is no longer about value. While the Sport has been evolving, so has the Range Rover. The new Range Rover is a massive thing and one of the most luxurious cars on or off the road at any price. It's become a plush, posh thing, the perfect replacement for the driver or the driven used to a Mercedes S-Class. It still has all the same off-road capability it's been renowned for over the years, but the percentage of buyers who will actually take advantage of that has to be in the single digits. Sir wouldn't dare risk scraping his expensive matte paint. The sport is less posh, but don't take that to mean it's bare bones. This is a different sort of luxury than the Range Rover, less coddling, just as comfortable. It's smaller and doesn't have the limo-like options that the big range now offers. It's less of a chauffeur special and has less tech for the sake of tech. This is a far more straightforward take on the formula, still capable, still high-end, still luxurious, but less obviously opulent. From the outside, it'd be a challenge for the unfamiliar to even distinguish the sport from its more expensive brother. The face is nearly identical to the look that was initiated on the Veeler, the sport's baby brother. There's a lack of exterior detailing, and I mean that in a good way. It's very simple, smooth, and classic. It won't age poorly like some other cars with huge scallops and character lines in the bodywork. The door handles are Tesla-esque, they slide out from the bodywork when it's unlocked and retract when it's locked. Sure, the look is clean, but during the cold blast when I had the sport, there were times the ice made them not retract all the way, so they looked broken. Not a great way to show off your $100,000 truck. The interior is first class all the way. The material choices are wonderful and the layout is elegant. Jaguar Land Rover has this ingenious solution for heated seat controls, with a push of the temperature knob bringing up the seat temperature. It's wonderful. I wish the same could be said of the infotainment system. If you only use it for something like CarPlay, then it's all good, with quick responses and a large screen to see your map. Using the built-in system is where the trouble starts. I prefer to listen to the radio when I drive, always have. Tuning to a satellite radio station can be frustrating, with laggy reactions from finger touches that can make you get the wrong station. I just want to hear some grunge, man. Driving it is what matter, though, and it's quite good. Used as most owners will use it, which is for airport runs, trips to the mall, and driving around suburbia, this is a lovely thing. The ride quality, even on 23-inch wheels, is outstanding. The steering is light and gives little in the way of any feedback, but it's accurate. I played around with the height adjustable suspension as well, and it's just ridiculous how high this thing can get off the ground. If you need to ford a small river before going into Neiman Marcus, you're covered. The best part, though, is the engine. This particular sport has a mild hybrid twin-charged straight-six with 395 horsepower and 406 foot-pounds of torque linked to a ZF8 speed automatic. There is a 523 horsepower BMW sourced V8 available, but I don't see a reason for why you'd need it. This engine is smooth, quiet, and never lacking for power. The mild hybrid makes it punchy on the low end, and it's buttery when you get up to speed. More power isn't always better.